Hey everyone, we're back. Two day break this time. Took a day off yesterday for the big pay per view. Enjoyed that. Not going to say anything in case some people haven't seen the fight yet, but if you didn't end up seeing it, definitely watch it. It was worth the watch. So, we're going to touch on a few different things today. One of the main things I want to touch on is guard animations and guard positioning. So, we're going to go ahead and do what we got to do to get in the fight. So, as usual, coming off a of defense, we're undertrained because, you know, you go into a fight, you defend your belt, you, you're peeking, and then right after you're just like, oh man, I totally forgot how to fight. It happens all the time. So also, while training, getting fat is the norm. So while you get fat while you train, you then have to work out to not be fat and to forget how to fight. So we're going to now forget how to fight so we can lose some weight. So now, uh, now we're not fat, and now we also know how to fight. We, sh we should be good, but we can't, so we'll hit A again. But now we can negotiate, so we're good. Okay, so Martinez is an 81 already. Gotti's a 73, and we fought Gotti about 700 times already. So I want to start moving up the ranks and getting to a belt. So Saul Alvarez is number one still. Let's go right after Crawford. He's going to look at us like little people, so we're probably only going to be able to get a 30% pull from this, but that's okay. Because we're looking toward the future. Oh man, you guys, this is going to be the most important fight camp of my life. I got to make sure I push A properly. Okay, so let's uh, sponsor a product that's definitely not anything Steel City related. And then we're going to do some training, as in hitting A button. So even for a text-based career mode, this is very hollow in terms of not having training minigames. Um, so uh, thanks to Modern Automatic, big shout out to you, buddy. Modern Automatic on Reddit um, got me to try Boxers Road 2. Um, I am going to buy a PSP and play it through the PSP because it was just I can't figure out the, the controls for it on the keyboard very well. But I can tell right away that there is so much more depth to the scheduling of training, meal preparation. You can actually spar in that game as well. So you can't really say it doesn't have training mini games. It does. But just from my like really s just very bare minimum experience with it, because I couldn't really figure out the controls, you can tell there is such a giant wealth of depth in that game. And that game is fairly old. And for the PlayStation Portable, but again, it's, amou it's about the amount of passion that the developers have for the sport and how much they want you to feel that in the end product. And um, what I am hearing is that Ash Habib is the gameplay director and CEO, but the person who is apparently doing most of the programming for the game is some Unity content creator called Aimbot, apparently. And apparently this guy doesn't even like boxing or boxing games at all. So then people want to argue with, oh, where's this l lack of passion, minimum work effort attitude? Where are you guys perceiving that from? H I'm trying to understand that. Well, now you can understand where we're perceiving it from because the guy that's actually designing the game and doing the programming for it doesn't give a shit about boxing. And just a big, big piece of advice to Ash Habib, if that is the case, I will apologize for blaming you for the direct lack of implementation of features but you are responsible for not keeping the people under you in control if that guy doesn't want to make the game that you want made you fire him and you find someone else you can't be passive as the boss or ceo of something like this that has a fiscal amount attached to it that you could be responsible for a large financial incentive to make sure this game comes out well you don't let someone who doesn't even like boxing take charge of the way the game's coming out and throttle features back that you want in the game. You fire them if they don't want to make the game you want made. And you stand for that. If anything, that is where you've let us down. <coughs> if that's true. So now we're going to get into the main a part of this episode. So guard animation. So see when I have my guard up, I'm still uh, at, like not look not squared up to the opponent but if I hold advanced guard see how I kind of pull up more squared to him 
that is the proper stance for when you're holding guard. So when you're holding guard, you want as much surface area of your gloves as possible facing the opponent. Obviously, it's common sense, right? So naturally, when you're in a boxing ring and you throw up guard, you square up to the opponent a bit more. So what I think they should do is just have you, when you pull guard like this, have your guy square up to him more like this instead of on this weird angle. Because when you're on this weird angle and holding guard, it looks like I'm being dangled from string that's held off my gloves and the center of like gravity is off and I'm kind of being dangled like forward in a way. That's what it looks like and it looks terrible. If you moved around more squared up like this, that could really help a lot with the blocking issues. Because when you stand squared up like this, that looks proper. But I can only do that if I'm holding advanced guard. Let's see how much stamina we can drain from him and if we can get him gassed. Because before, when the AI was artificially inflated, they could throw like like 800 punches and still be at like 50% stamina. And I think they said they took the artificial AI inflation out when career mode dropped. So let's see. I'm going to really throw on my block this game and we're going to see how much shots we can draw out of the AI and see what their stamina correlation to punch count is like to see if they really have taken the artificial inflation out of the AI. If you guys go back into one of my previous videos where I was testing this, someone confirmed that the AI um, uh, programmer actually confirmed the fact that it was inflated. But they were supposed to have taken that out when career mode dropped. So I'm going to try to really get Terrence Crawford to throw a lot of shots here by keeping my block up. And we'll see just how much stamina he burns through. So the other thing that would make this game look a lot better is if you played the old Fight Nights 3, 4, you can, like, if I was leaning this way, I could throw a shot from that angle. If I was leaning back, I could throw, like, I could throw a shot with my head off the center line. And that made for a lot of really awesome technical fights in the pocket. Because I could weave a shot and then come back from this angle. But see, if I do that in this game, my animation resets back to neutral position before I throw the punch. So if you're trying to play this game like a real boxing simulation, you'll get punished for it, and you won't understand why your punches are late. That's something that is in the Fight Night games, and I don't understand how this game can say it's the most authentic boxing game ever when you can't even throw with your head off the center line like that. So we're getting Crawford pretty gassed here, I think. Looks like he's t getting pretty tired. We're blocking most of these shots here. But then see, when he's gassed, we miss everything. <laughs> that will happen a lot. They're saying we lost that round? I don't understand. I think we won that round, but whatever. But yeah, see, as I'm trying to do this block style to see how many punches we can get out of Crawford here, you can see that um, as technical as I'm trying to make this look and as realistic as I'm trying to fight, because of the fact that after I lean, I always return back to the neutral position before I throw a punch, it just looks terrible. 
That's why you look so rigid in this game. It has, it doesn't have that fluidic look that a boxing match should have between two high-level boxers. And if you uh, don't quite understand what I'm saying, go look at Fight Night footage. There's a good clip of it on Reddit right now, demonstrating exactly what I'm talking about. Like, when I'm le leaning and making him miss, I should be able to fire back while I'm still leaned over to that side. Little things like that would really improve the way this game looks and how it also plays in terms of technical ability. Punch again. Oh, just So, yeah, if anyone's like, wow, this guy's good at blocking and weaving. How you practice that in this game? Because there's no mini games to practice it. You got to get inventive. What I do is pick really fast hand speed fighters. Like Amir Khan is a good one. Um, Ryan Garcia is a good one. Put them on Undisputed and then go against them and just stand in front of them with your guard up. Don't, like, try to technically beat them. Don't Just jab them, get them to fight you, and just throw your guard up and practice blocking the whole fight. That's what I did. It does help. I have, uh, I have some episodes, that if you go far enough back, I had some episodes that will help you train and get better at the game. But a lot of those episodes won't even factor in now because a lot of the game has been changed and dumbed down even from that point that it was at a few months ago. I think Crawford's getting pretty gassed here. And it's only in the fourth round. I would get rid of a lot of the directional punches like I already explained. And then add those features that I mentioned. They'd be, they're small features that would be easy to implement. And it would really change the game a lot. Wouldn't totally salvage it, but it would for sure help. A lot of the blocking is just understanding what angle you have to be at for how long. Um, and then you can let it go. And with enough practice, you can really figure out it doesn't take that much long to catch the punch, that much time to catch the punch. And then you can let go of the body block and snap back up to the head. It's just about understanding the timing, and you can get it with a lot of practice. Because I see a lot of people just hold down and block their body, and then the shots come through, and they're like, I'm blocking, I'm blocking. And it's like, yeah, but you're not advanced blocking the side of your body. <laughs> uh, that kind of stuff isn't, like, the game's fault. That's kind of just people being dumb, but, yeah. But I'm hoping you're starting to see the more technical I fight, it still doesn't matter. It doesn't look right because of just how rigid you are whenever you throw a shot. No matter how many shots I weave or lean and avoid, I can't throw from that angle. I immediately snap back up to being a rigid pole, then punch. Thank you. 
Another comment someone made that I agree with heavily is that the uppercuts in this game are soft. Like, they're one of the most devastating punches in the game. Or in, in boxing, sorry. It's supposed to be the deterrent for someone dipping down or for someone trying to go for your body without earning it. It's supposed to be the counter to a lot of big things that in this game are a problem and don't have a real counter to. Because there's no real pop on an uppercut. There needs to be a bigger pop on uppercuts because they're the harder shot to earn. And if you time someone coming into an uppercut, it needs to just flatten them. That was weird. <laughs> Those lines of blood, that was so bad. Oh yeah, tier one. This is another thing I absolutely hate. Even though that was like a devastating chinning. Tier 1, Tier 2, Tier 3. really weird oh it's the end of this boxer's career clearly paying attention to my stamina there. <clears throat> what is that sound effect they've added? Oh, that sounds so bad. <laughs> So yeah, when you do the knockdown minigame, try to keep your yellow bars at the bottom of the red because you can't force them to drop down any faster. They can just drop at their own rate. So you want to keep them at the bottom. Because then if you, uh, you, you have a less chance of overshooting it. It takes a little bit of practice. But again, there's no fucking way to practice the knockdown minigame. So you think you'd have to have lower stamina than us. We haven't used any power punches this whole fight. I've just been punching off the stick without any power modifier. Oh, 
One uh, big problem I have is as my stamina is getting lower, I forget to adjust the amount of punches I'm throwing sometimes. And that's something I recommend you practice is as your stamina is dropping, make sure you're correlating that with an appropriate amount of punches. You don't want to still be trying to throw the same combos you were throwing when you're at 80% stamina if you're at 60% stamina. And that's kind of something I tunnel vision on at times. As you can see, I also don't do that stupid diagonal dodge stuff. It's just, it has no place in a boxing ring, so I'm not going to use it. I'd rather lose a fight playing this properly than use that shit just to make myself win. Because as bad as this game is, at least fight with honor. Oh, I hate that back step straight, too. All the back step di directional punches need to go except the jab. Knockout headshot. No, bro. That was a body shot. I really hope they fix the commentary. Oh, we got him. Okay, let's see what his stamina is and how many punches he threw. I would have preferred that go all 10 rounds just so we could have really seen uh, at the deep end how many. But still, we got six rounds. Ha, it was a tie. <laughs> That's crazy. So he threw 514 punches and he still has 67% <coughs> stamina. You see what I mean? So he only landed 165 out of 514. Terrible amount landed, horrible amount like missed. And when you miss shots, you drain more stamina. So he had a horrible percent missed, which means he should have drained stamina even faster. And he still only had 67%. He was still very high in his stamina. Whereas we threw 453 punches, so quite a bit less, like 50 or so less. We connected at a higher rate, and we dropped almost like 14% stamina more than him. And that's just crazy. <laughs> like, uh, that is crazy. So I really think they still have the AI inflated in terms of its stats. I still think they're artificially inflated to make up for the fact that AI is probably terrible. I think when you're fighting it on intermediate or pro, it's probably not tuned up and that's why you just run right through intermediate and pro I think the only thing they do different in undisputed is clinch more and then spam you after the clinch and have higher uh, like inflated stats out the gate for their stamina and damage they do and probably damage reduction to them okay so hopefully that puts us in a good enough place oh I gotta give up the continental belt oh fuck whatever okay so, now we're undertrained, even though we just beat the shit out of Terrence Crawford in a six-round fight. We're 50 undertrained. But we are high enough rank that we should be able to go for the belt in the next episode. All right, everyone. Thanks for supporting the series. I hope you all had a good weekend. Make sure you like. Make sure you leave a comment. And if you haven't already, and if you really want to support us, make sure to hit that subscribe. Take care, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow.